Hello everyone, my name is John and I'm your nursing student today. Today we're going to go over uh, administering insulin. So I've just come back from taking my patient's blood sugar, which the glucometer reading was at 10.6. This patient has been admitted with uncontrolled type 2 diabetes. So they are requiring Novolin NPH at AM and at dinner time, as well as hemoglobin QID as per the sliding scale. So I have this information here on the sliding scale. So the Novolone NPH is 22 units at breakfast time, so I'm going to administer that. And then I want to take the reading from the glucometer of 10.6 and follow it along here on the sliding scale to look at the uh, amount given for the Lispro. So I have the insulin Lispro Humalog. It is uh, indicated as the moderate dose regimen and 10.6 10 um, 10 under the glucose level would fall under as four units for that scale. Okay, so what we want to do first, um, kind of just explained here, is find the doctor's orders. So you find the chart, you find out what types, what type or types of insulin have been ordered, and then uh, look at each one. So the types are standard basal, so that's the long-acting dose, so that's the NPH Novolin, and the Hemoglobin so that's indicated through the sliding scale. So we, when we look at the sliding scale, we follow through and match that up as per what is uh, to be given. So this is the four units. Okay. Um, so then uh, what we want to do is look at the patient's name, the medication, the order, look at the doctor's order versus the glucometer reading, make sure that that matches up and um, go through those orders and make sure that everything has been checked. Other considerations you want to take is, is the patient going to eat? If they're not eating, then we don't want um, their numbers uh, spiking up and down um, too much. So generally we want to give this insulin when they're about to eat. Other considerations you want to take is, are they going for a test where the insulin is asked to be held? And uh, if they are NPO. So we have our two insulins here. This is the NPH, you'll notice that it's cloudy and the Lispro, okay? With a uh, cloudy NPH, we wanna shake it, give it a good rub between the two hands here, and that just gets it reconstituted. Now, these were both opened in the last week. Um, you'll notice that the caps were removed, but um, we want to make sure, and those are good for 30 days in the hospital setting after they've been opened, but we wanna make sure, let's put this in my waist here, that we have alcohol swabbed at the tops here. Okay, so talked about reconstituting the insulin. Let's get this in my waist here. So we have two, two different types of syringes. We have the 100 unit CC and the 50 unit, which is the one that we're going to use. Um, the syringe is a half inch needle, 29 gauge. They're both actually the same. So it's just uh, showing the width and diameter of the syringe. So I'm going to open my syringe here. So what I want to do before I start is I'm going to insert 22 units of air into that NPH syringe. And then I'm going to inject four, four units of air into the uh, Lispro. And then I'm going to draw the list, bro, and then I will move back to the NPH. Okay, very careful with the needle. And four units. Okay, I've injected that into here. So now I'm going to draw back my four units. I'm actually going to draw back about six and just verify if there's any air bubbles which actually on first pull, we're looking good, very good. So we'll put that back down to four. Okay, put the list row back. Now we'll take the NPH, insert that in. Now I can only pull, I can't do any air bubble checks now. That's why we did it the first time. So I'm gonna pull back in a fluid motion up to 26, because that's our total amount. So I've pulled 22 units of the NPH. Okay, in a fluid motion. Okay. Now we can recap it. Okay. 
Now, this is staying in my site. Otherwise, if I was stepping away, I'd make sure that this is labeled clearly because I'm staying right here at my station while giving this tutorial, I'm going to leave that, okay? So we've talked about uh, uh, drawing the medications, making sure it's in a fluid motion, okay? So we can recap it in the upright, or you can, you can use the passive recap on the side as well. All the doses must be checked with the instructors uh, as students, so very important to follow that. Um, so when we go to the rim, we're gonna check the patient's armband, match it to the orders, verify the glucometer reading. So again, it's reading at 10.6. We follow the sliding scale, we follow our orders. Landmarking, we're looking at the abdomen and behind the arms. Other areas that we can use are the lower back, the upper thighs, back and front. Generally in the hospital setting though, uh, the abdomen is the most rapid place where the insulin's absorbed. So that may alternate in the, uh, you may alternate between abdomen and back of arms in the hospital setting. So with the arm, we wanna hold the fold, okay? The needle's very fine, so we wanna hold the fold for easy injection, okay? We verify the patient, we verify the uh, indicators. So we are going to do another alcohol swab. My waist, swab the skin, okay? We'll wait for this to dry, okay? So um, what we want to do is we're going to gently bunch the skin. Okay, we remove the cap, gently bunch the skin, and we're gonna just use a dart motion, okay, in a fluid one, two, three. We're going to then inject, pull out, slide the cap to safety. Okay, I'm immediately gonna put this in my sharp spin, which is right beside me here. Okay, that has been uh, disposed. Okay, we're gonna assess the area make sure it looks okay. And we will come back in about 15 minutes, to check to see how the patient's doing, check for signs and symptoms of hyperglycemia, check to see what their numbers are at. Now, during this procedure, you may wear gloves. It's dependent on what you'd prefer. This, I uh, have my hand sanitizer here. We've done the hand hygiene beforehand, okay? As far as documentation, you wanna go back to the chart, look at the types of insulin that was given, document that document the site that was given, ensure that the MAR and uh, has been signed and everything that uh, you have done has been documented verbatim, okay? Now, as far as uh, patient teaching, you want to uh, teach the patient to uh, avoid rubbing the site of the injection, um, now, because they, they may often do self-administration at home, making sure that we're talking about pushing the plunger to completely get the insulin in. Uh, releasing the skin, uh, again, talking about uh, avoiding rubbing the skin and um, definitely not reusing syringes, making sure that they understand uh, proper uh, parameters behind that. Now, some nursing interventions, we want to make sure that we're educating uh, the, the patient about diet and exercise as, as far as it relates to diabetes, talk about monitoring the blood sugars educating uh, about the diabetes that, that they have, educate, educate on, on foot protection, talking about monitoring vitals, uh, talking about how to clean feet, um, procedures that they can do there, okay? We wanna, and then as far as uh, nursing assessments after we've implemented this task, we wanna uh, evaluate the patient understanding of the drug therapy um, by asking them to uh, talk about what they have just received, uh, its indication and what the adverse effects are to watch for. So that way we have an understanding that the patient uh, understands the protocol that we have followed um, and things that they need to do while administering their insulin at home. Uh, thanks very much for joining me today. I hope uh, you enjoyed this. Thank you.